Hello everyone, hope you are well on this Monday afternoon. It is August the 12th, and you guys, it's almost right at the middle of August. I mean, think about that. Time is flying by, and we are hurtling. We are hurtling towards the end of this year. We know what awaits us. Well, we actually don't know. We, we know that trouble awaits us. We don't know the details, which is even better reason to keep preparing for the road ahead. We know trouble awaits us. We know that 2025 is very unpredictable. And I believe we need to keep preparing for 2025, the end of this year, end of 2024, beginning of next year. Are you prepared for not only the big things that could turn our world sideways, but also just the personal SHTFs, the, the things that will come out of left field and slam you upside the back of the head when you didn't expect it. I'll go more into that, okay? A couple of things here. I've got questions like I always, you know, y'all know I have questions. And uh, I'm gonna put them forth, get your uh, opinions. Uh, also, uh, some quick updates that I'll go over first. I also have a very good passage that I will share at the end or towards the end of this, uh, of this video, all right? So stay tuned for that. They're, they're always good. I hear a lot of people talking about being very tired, more tired than usual, or fatigued. And I hear this from people of all ages, young, old, in between, everything. And I don't know what that is. Are we just stressed? Are we uh, trying to keep up with the cycle, the news, the this, the work, that? You know, Even people that I know or, or that I hear that aren't necessarily into preparedness like us, saying the same thing like they're 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 tired to get sick more often they get sick easier you know i mean what is that it seems to really have taken a hold just in the last few years after a certain event in 2020 you know the thing so i wonder i mean is there a correlation i mean what do you guys think about that just i hear more and more people talking about that so i wanted to put it out there Israel, real quick, just quick updates. Uh, the, the big there's, there's this much anticipated attack that Iran is supposed to impose on Israel, and I we've heard for the last two weeks that an attack is imminent. I I don't I don't know what to believe anymore about that. I I think the more time that goes by, it's the more likely that there will be no direct attack from Iran on Israel. I believe at this point, unless it happens in the next day or two. I believe that we will just see the normal, what we've been seeing for, I don't know, years and years, the way they just use their proxies like Hezbollah, Hamas, to, to do what they can to, to attack Israel. Israel will in turn stomp on them, and, and it's just a cycle back and forth. <clears throat> At least that's what I, that's kind of what I'm feeling now. I could be totally off. I could be. That's just my thoughts. So we have that going on. The uh, UK and England uh, English officials continue, continue threatening Americans. They're sending nasty grams, nasty letters to Elon Musk, threatening him with legal action if he does not use X to censor, censor information coming out of England about all the riots and such. Really? And that on top of them saying that they're going to come after American citizens and extradite us to London, I guess, for social media posts that are against their narrative. Yeah. I've seen a lot of funny memes and stuff about that. I mean, it's it's pretty funny. And it's, it is sad, and it, but it is funny. I mean, it, I mean, come on, man. I mean, really, you, 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 come on come on over here. I, I don't think it'll go well for you. You know, we are, uh, we have the second amendment here. We have the first amendment here. Second amendment protects the first. That's the way it works here. So, um, if I were to have a message directly for the, uh, whatever that pencil neck guy, the, the guy who came out the, uh, I don't know, I forget his title now, where he said he would extradite American citizens. Come on, come on over fella. We'll see how it goes for you. I don't think you'll like it. All right, that's all I'll say about that. 
Um, we have an little invasion of sorts uh, with Ukraine has invaded part of Russian territory and has taken, excuse me, has taken at least one province or area, maybe two. I know they invaded and hold, they hold part of or, or Kursk, uh, a province or an area of Russian territory. Put the Ukrainian flag up and everything. That's weird. So what's going on with Russia? I mean, uh, this, I, I get to where I don't know what to believe about that war anymore. Obviously, we have video of that and them rolling in and all this, and they're holding it and changing the flag out and everything. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I know Putin was supposed to speak uh, earlier today. I haven't really caught up on that. Um, but uh, will this cause more escalation? And what is the next escalation? Um, Will Putin be backed into a corner where he will use, where he will use possibly nu nuclear uh, capable weapons? Um, heaven forbid that happens. But this is something we need to keep an eye on. I don't think we obsess about it and you know, follow it 24/7 and just go crazy about it. But you know, something to keep an eye on. But it's very interesting. But yeah, so that is kind of the, a quick swing around some of those issues. Um, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to the next part. You know, I have questions. And my main question is, I don't know if it's a question, but, and this has been gnawing at me. I mean, I've never, I've never, you know, and I've been alive almost 60 years, pushing 60 years old here. And I can't remember a time when our country has been so rudderless, so lack of direction, such a lack of leadership. And I know I keep asking the question, who's in charge? Who's running the show? I mean, really, who is it? Who's got the nuclear football? Who is making decisions? Who's who's in charge of the day-to-day -day type, you know, your operations, you're making day-to-day -day decisions? I know a lot of people say Obama or Pelosi or Schumer or Triumphant, you know, the three. I don't But are they really, like, every day? Are they into all the nitty-gritty? Are they into the weeds with it? I mean, are they at just a higher level? I, I don't know. I mean... But who is in charge? It's certainly not Biden. I mean, officially, he's still the president. But he's on the beach eating ice cream or taking a drink. Uh, you know, so he's not in charge. He's not making decisions. The camel? The camel is cackling in the basement. I, you know, and I don't... She'll surface a little bit here and there, but... Don't say much. She probably shouldn't say much. Wouldn't help her. So I don't think she's in charge. No. Nah. She's not making decisions. Although she's been the vice president for the last three and a half plus years, there's that. People will actually people actually believe that if she is elected president, she will turn all these things around. The economy will be better. Prices will come down. Houses will be affordable. All the wars will end. Inflation will come down. So my question to these people is, she's if she's capable of doing that, why hasn't it happened? I mean, she's been around. She's been part of this administration. She's been the vice president this whole time. So what's she holding back for? I, that right there should squash her candidacy. She was the border czar. Look at the border, or the lack thereof. There is no border. Still. It's worse than ever, y'all. They're not talking about it, but it is. But back to who's in charge. You know, so, who is it? I mean, is it the Speaker of the House, Johnson? Obama? Schumer? Pelosi? AOC, 
that's frightening. Um, the military? Antony Blinken? Or even scarier, an even scarier thought is that it's really nobody, y'all. It's really nobody, and it's just kind of an, a, like the inmates run the asylum. It's like willy-nilly decisions are just getting being made by random people or people in the background or nameless, faceless advisors, advisors who are just making decisions. That's even more scary. A lot of people will say Obama. I don't know about that. I mean, I know he has a lot of influence. I get that. But I, I don't know. I think I think on a higher level, as far as who's in charge, from on a higher level, not not day-to-day -day operations, but high up, it's, I, I believe it's probably something above Obama, Obama probably a, a, some group in the shadows that we, we just don't see or hear from. That's, that's just my thought. Some people could say the deep state. I think it's even more than that. <clears throat> I think it's some group in the shadows. Satan. You know? Satan driven. But I can't remember a time when there was no, like, visible, visible leader that would come out and, like, actually do a press conference every now and then, answer questions, or talk to the American people in a cogent fashion and complete sentences that could actually read the teleprompter or have or what a concept go from the teleprompter to actually speaking ad lib and, and make sense I mean even Clinton Bill Clinton I know people rail on him and he is just, you know, but the guy could speak he didn't even need a teleprompter sometimes the guy could just get up there and start talking and he'd make it sound good he did, Reagan was a lot like that a great communicator we so lack that we don't even have a bad leader you know there are, there are evil leaders that have that leadership capability you know what I'm talking about but they're leaders like they're actually intelligent. They use it for evil, and they can speak. But there's no there's no denying who's in charge, right? Well, we don't have that. We don't even have that. I'm not saying I prefer that. I'm just I'm just my observation. That's just a dog observation. So who's really running it? I don't know. I don't know if anybody really knows the answer to that. We can speculate. Let me know what you think. But it's a kind of a scary thought, actually. I, I mean, really. Can you remember a time when we were like that? I guess there were some transitions that were weird, you know, I know, but not for such a long period of time like this. Anyway, keep preparing for 2025, guys. I mean, we are, we are staring it in the face, and... Uh, ah, I'm just getting concerned. I, you know, well, I've been concerned. But... Let's do all we can to get ourselves in a position of health, not just physical health, but financial. With our preps too, with our financial, what what can we pay down? What can we get to be debt free, or or to pay down some debt? I know some of you say you're all, you're debt free. That's awesome, more power to you. But a lot of us aren't. So what can we do to even just improve upon that? Focus on it. Focus on preps as well. Live simple. Less complicated. Less fancy, but things that can do the job. You know? Um, can you hunker down in place for three weeks, two to three weeks, and not have to go to the store? Not have to get out in the melee if things really go sideways? Even as inflation continues to rise, even if we have no SHTF, you know, widespread SHTF, and we know inflation is not stopping anytime soon, so whatever you can get today that you know you use is going to be cheaper now than it will be a month from now. Heck, even a week from now. So focus on that as well. Keep grabbing a few extra items when you go to the store. But let's continue to do our preps and keep stacking. 
all right? Because time is getting short. We're just, you know, we can get busy with things. We did busy with things. And we do the things and, and the time just slips away. And like before you know it, gosh, oh my gosh, the summer's gone. And we know what's coming. We know what's next, don't we? I'm going to go to a passage. It is from the book of John. Good one. From the book of John, chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Some translations will say produces perseverance, which is a good one too. But consider it joy because we are going to we are going to, we already have, and are going to encounter trials, tribulation, troubles. It's because we're believers doesn't mean we have it easy. We have it tough, just as anyone, or maybe tougher. But the testing of your faith, when we go through these testing, it toughens us up. It makes us stronger. It strengthens our faith. So don't be afraid of that. It will make your faith stronger, and it will prepare you to defend it even better, all right? Because if we're not prepared, if we're not confident, then it's easier to poke holes in our beliefs and our faith, right? But when we're prepared and we're and we're strong, we're strong in the faith and we're solid, it's tougher to knock us down, right? I hope that makes sense. Let's keep stacking. Let's keep doing what we can do, you know, what we're capable of doing, of course. And uh, let's keep our eye on things. Let's be watchful. Be safe when we're out. Be safe. Be, be aware. Keep our awareness up when we're out and about. Stay close to Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you soon.